What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel. We're finally back from Madrid. Thanks for the patience as I've gotten back. And I am a little bit under the weather from all the traveling. We got delayed last night coming home by like four hours in the airport. It was an absolute disaster. But we're back. We've tested out a couple of these players. I've actually got two of these players on my other profile. I am going to be waiting until I start my Dream Team Chronicles because I am going to be filling my squad with a lot of these guys. But we are going to be doing our first video back with the Golden Boys player review. What a name, by the way, as well. Golden Boys. But anyway, nominating contracts. If you've got a lot of nominating contracts, there are some absolute gems in this pack. Absolute, like, brilliant players. There's a couple of misses that I would probably just skip and not sign. Um, Okafor, we'll go into them all in a second, but yeah, there's some incredible players in this. I think for four four star timber there is is absolutely insane. Uh, Gavardial, I think, looks immense. I think depending on how you train him up, you can turn Gavardial into you know like an average player, or you can turn him into an absolute beast. Obviously, there's going to be a couple of ways to train him up, but we're going to show you what I think is the best way of training him up and why. Um, but yeah, we're going to start and go through them all. So this is a very, very good pack if you are looking for some in-game players or players just to have a bit of crack with because there's some really exciting players to play with here. So starting with number uh, one is Okafor, who is 78 overall. He actually goes up to an 86 overall. That's how we've trained him up there. Now, there's a couple of things about this card that I like. Obviously, he's got standard form, so that's a bit of a miss. But he has got super sub acrobatic finishing, and he's also got um, chip shot control, which is very, very, very good for a goal poacher center forward because it means that you'll be able to kind of like get those chip shots off. And it, it still is a very overpowered way of scoring. So if you are struggling to kind of score, you could do worse than have this guy on the bench bring him on in the 70th minute he's not the tallest he's not going to be like a different threat for you but as your players begin to tire he isn't a bad option to have on the bench because he does have that super sub and he also has dipping shots so you'll be able to get a couple of chances away this is how we've trained him up so he goes for to an 86 overall um he's not going to be like i don't think an end game player like his offensive awareness is too low there even though his acceleration speed and balance are quite decent um his dribbling isn't high enough now you could train him up in a different way right for this we've done dribbling here so we've turned him into kind of like a winger where he's 89 overall rated uh 12 points into dribbling eight into dexterity and seven into lower body strength if we were to pump up here we'd only get to 79 finishing um shooting but like at that, bringing him on as a super sub, he'll just be a backup for you. You're not going to be really playing this guy. So I probably would give this guy a miss. Um, but that's not to say that you could find him good for you because every player is kind of different with how they play. We've also got this guy who's one of definitely one of the picks of the pack. This guy has incredible stats, lads, right? So he has got standard form and he doesn't have blocker for a DMF. That's a big a big issue with defensive midfielders. Um, I did a video on that, I think, on the importance of blocker and interception. Maybe I haven't uploaded it yet. I've so many videos already kind of done or started. But uh, this guy, lads, this guy is the real deal, right? And he's definitely one of the gems of this pack. On looking at him here, you mightn't think it, but look at his aggression, his defensive engagement, and his stamina. That's what you need for a box-to-box -box DMF, right? If you're going to be sitting him in the hole, you need an anchor man. If you're going to be sitting your DMF in the hole, like protecting the back line and just blocking everything um, and disrupting everything, then you need a, an anchor man, I would say. And you need to have defensive on him and you need to just literally just stay in the center circle. Um, I did a video on that where I'm comparing kind of creative midfielders versus just stoppers, disruptors, box to box. And this guy has got every stat you possibly could want for it. Apart from having blocker as a player skill and apart from having unwavering form, he is incredible right look how we've trained him up right we've pumped in 13 stats into his defense which brings up his defensive engagement to 97 his aggression to 94 awareness to 85 and tackling to 88 like unbelievable we also have stamina at 83 we also have 77 low pass and 76 lofted pass i definitely think he's worth it like if you're looking at it if he is like a four star you'd say he's still worth it but the fact that he's a three star i think he's a definite like he's there's just no doubt in my mind that you should be getting that guy and trying him out because i know for a fact he's going to be an absolute monster he's definitely one that i'm going to be getting um when i do have my dream team chronicles starting again 
We have also got Daku, who's one of my favorite players. He was already uh, based. Um, I already featured him in one of my Hidden Gem series. Um, I think his standard card still holds up because you're going to get a lot more levels with his standard card, obviously. Um, you know, you're going to get another maybe, what, 10 levels with his standard card, which brings him up on track with this guy. Um, but like at the end of the day, it depends how you train him up. And I think that, you know, there isn't anything really lacking with him here. He doesn't, you know, he's just an outright winger. He's a, you know, you're not going to be passing the ball or crossing the ball in with this guy. This guy is just going to be pure blister and pace and speed. Um, you know, and balance. That's kind of what you're going to be getting with him. So when we go over here to eFootball DB again, you've seen that we've used the 34 levels, we've used the 66 progression points, 11 into dribble and 11 into lower body strength and 12 into dexterity. The only thing lacking on this card is his offensive awareness, but if you are using him as a winger, it's not as important as maybe a center forward or an SS or an AMF because you are going to get that dribbling, you're going to get the speed and acceleration and balance. Those are the four key stats you need as a winger. This guy is a no-brainer as well. If you have not got the standard version of this card, Daku is a no-brainer as well as trust me his stats his player skills everything the only thing stopping this card from being completely overpowered and putting him on par with Neymar or somebody like that is his form isn't unwavering so that's how highly I rate Daku or Doku you say tomato I say tomato whatever but anyway we've got Dest as well Dest is very very similar uh, him and Nuno Mendes are actually very similar one's a left back one's a right back how we've trained him up so we've also got Dest here um, and Nuno Mendes who are going to be really good players. You've uh, got standard form on Dest, which is probably the only thing that holds him back. But he has got early crosser and speeding bullet. Unreal for a left back or right back, depending on where you play him. He can play both. And he's also got one touch pass and pinpoint crossing, which, listen, they are probably two of the most important stats if you are an, a possession based player. You need one touch pass. Yes, if you play quick counter and you play long ball counter and you play the meta, you need one touch pass as well. But you need to have a lot of players that are comfortable on the ball. You can play one touch pass without, you know, being spammy or, you know, if you want to play possession. And he's got one touch pass and pinpoint crossing, which means that you can bombard up the wings and bombard up uh, the flanks whenever you need to. And if you get into trouble, you can turn back um, and swing the ball in, you know, to somebody in the box that is very good in the air, like collar or whoever you have in the in the box that you're going to be swinging the ball into. So yeah, very, very highly rated player as well. You can see here how we've trained him up. So he's definitely, he's one that's on the cusp. I think if you have a lot of five-star nominating contracts, I definitely think if you are missing a right back or a left back, him and Nuno Mendes are extremely good. Um, we've got him up there to 90 speed, 90 acceleration. His defensive awareness is 73, which is a bit low, but we are going to be able just to defend manually if you are a good defender. If you're not the best defender, I would probably go for a right back that has better defensive awareness just to be able to cover your tracks a little bit with his AI. Tackling aggression could be higher, but yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but we've got good stamina, good offensive awareness, good low pass and lofted pass. Uh, same with, with um, Nuno Mendes, right? Nuno Mendes is slightly better, I would say, because he's got he's obviously a left back, right? He's also got all the stats that you could possibly want. He goes up to a 91 overall as well. His defensive side of the game is is probably worse than Des, but his attacking uh, is going to be better. So he's still got early crosser and he has also got pinpoint crossing, but he's got interception, slide tackle and low lofted pass. So he doesn't have one touch pass, but he's got low lofted pass. He's also got long range shooting, which is a very unusual one. And he's got that all important unwavering form until the rating comes back, which should be next week um, or probably Thursday, I should say. Uh, yeah, this guy is one of my favorite players. His standard version was one of my favorite players to use when I was doing my original Dream Team Chronicles in eFootball 2022. And I'm definitely going to be giving this guy another go. See, the problem is I have Carlos. So if you don't have Carlos, I think this is probably up there at one of the best cards that is available at the moment as a left back the only thing he's missing is blocker but the fact that he has all these attacking stats and he's got interception as a player skill as well as slide tackling and he's got 95 speed 92 acceleration and 88 stamina unbelievable man absolutely unbelievable and moving on we also have a saka Saka is yeah I mean I've spent I, I've I've done Saka a good bit before we featured him a good bit before you know what you're getting with Saka unwavering form he's got loads of player skills I've featured him quite a bit before one touch pass low loft to pass Saka is kind of like a really good winger but 
Um, I would actually play Saka left mid. That's where I would play him because he's obviously going to be left footed. You can swing those balls in. He's got the pace. He's got the passing. That's the big difference with Saka and somebody like Daku, who Daku is just pure speed, blistering speed. But Saka can actually pass. If you look at his lofted pass there, he can actually pass the ball in. Even though he doesn't have early crosser and he doesn't have pinpoint crossing, you will be able to manually pass the ball in with him. You'll be able to dribble. You'll be able to have to outpace people. You have the balance. You have the offensive awareness, the ball control, tight possession. But you also have that 80 lofted pass. So again, if you don't have any of these versions of Saka, if you haven't got any of these versions of him previously, he's definitely up there for one of the best five stars there. But you have to play him in a very specific way. He's not going to be Neymar 2.0 or anything like that. You know, he doesn't have the tricks and the skills Um I found from playing with Saka, he doesn't have the tricks and the skills as other players. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. Um, moving on, we also have, I also, uh, Kudos, I won't spend too much time on him. He's an interesting one as well. Like you don't have to go strictly on pure stats. Um, and the IX man here, he's only 22 years of age, so he fits in with a lot of squads uh, if you've got, um, if you've got like uh, a manager that suits under 23s. He's got some really nice player skills for a centre forward, like way to pass, low off the pass. He can play AMF and CMF as well. He is a whole player. I would probably play him as a centre forward because he's got some fairly good stats. But no matter where you play him, he is a miss for me because of the form, the inconsistent form. You just don't waste your time with inconsistent form players, lads. Um, it's not worth it in my opinion. That's just my opinion, but... Yeah, I definitely think he's definitely a miss, which is a pity because the card looks very unique. Now, on to the four kind of big boys here, right? Uh, three center backs, and then we have Lahavic up front as well. So we have got Timber up first. Timber is going to be a guy that I featured before. Now, this is what you need which, when you have a center back, right? And I'll explain this very, very easily from literally hundreds of hours of testing and playing, right? If you have a center back, right? You need to have a centre back that is either defensive awareness needs to be like 90 plus or else you need to have speed and acceleration over 80, right? Now, if you've got both of that, obviously you're going to have an unbelievable centre back. But if you've got close to that, you're going to have an excellent centre back that can really do it all, right? So throw in with that interception and blocker are the two most important player skills for dmf and for center backs it doesn't really matter for left backs or right backs obviously if you can get it the more players that have it the better um but your center backs definitely need interception and blocker because what you'll find is when you are kind of doing one-on-ones with players um even if they don't have the best stats if they've got interception and blocker it seems to just be so overpowered yeah timber also has unwavering form He's one of my favorite players that I played with before. Um, I definitely would probably get him for four star nominating contract. You can't go wrong. Like look at the stats he has, man, right? When we boost him up here. This is what I'm talking about, right? So he doesn't have defensive awareness over 90. But what we've done is we've uh, put up his speed and his acceleration to 85 and 83. So any lack of reaction he's going to have compared to a guy like maybe Ruben Diaz, who's got like 92 or 93 defensive awareness is going to be met up for with the speed and acceleration now with timber you will need to be a bit more of a, a better defender like you need to be a bit of a more manual defender and be able to read the lanes yourself because the ai won't kick in as much um but with the way that the game plays every now and again it doesn't really matter what you do at the back anyway so i think that having a player with all the stats all the player skills that you could possibly want timber can also play out from the back like look at the ball control and the low passing absolutely quality i'm going to be getting him for definite as well uh similar with Gavar Gavardial, obviously he lit up the world cup um i featured him in my hidden gem series way back when i was playing with him for a long time with eFootball 2022 um an excellent player in the game and i think a definite definite boy in this as well yes he's a five-star nominating contract yes you could get Saka, you could get somebody else but i'm going to be getting Gavardial definitely like 100 i think he's probably one of the best players in the packs and again we'll go back to it right yeah you have to you have to look at the players right and you have to test them out look at the player skills that he has right we look he's got interception and blocker he's got unwavering form check 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 right he's also got man marking he's got way to pass pinpoint crossing and heading and he's got aerial superiority and fighting spirit so even though he's not the tallest you you're gonna have as a cb you're gonna have unwavering form fighting spirit blocker interception and man marking 
like even without way to pass and pinpoint crossing, you know, you don't need to, um, you don't need to use anything else, right? On top of that, you've also got a uh, long ball expert and early crosser that if you did want to use this guy as a left back or a right back, I do think that you are going to struggle with the dribbling a little bit. This is how I would train him up. I would use him as a CB and this is how I would train him up, lads, right? I would use him there, 93 overall. We're going to boost 14 points into defending and we're going to put the rest into speed and acceleration, right? That'll bring up his defensive awareness to 81, which still isn't high enough, I don't think, compared to like some of the meta center backs. But as I said, with the player skills that he has, the unwavering form, he is going to be a monster for you. Now, you could go the opposite way, right? You could take this down to maybe eight, leave his defensive awareness at 75. The rest of his defense stats are going to be incredible there. And then we are going to turn him into kind of like a left back style player. So we're going to put four into that. We're going to put one more into lower body strength. And then we're going to put a few more into dexterity. And then we're going to put a few more into this. We're going to take down the, the strength a little bit because we don't need that as a left back. And then we're going to pump in the rest into either his dribbling or into his acceleration there. So you could turn him into a really good left back as well. That has all the player skills. This is what I'm talking about. You're going to have a left back in the game that you can play left back that is going to have the player skills of a center back, the physicality of a center back. But the only thing you're going to be lacking in is speed. That's it. Like even if you wanted to go back to defensively a little bit, you could put another two there. You could pump another one into dexterity to get it up to 80. And if you are going to be making manual runs, you don't need to you don't need to worry too much about the offensive awareness. He's going to be one of the most defensive left backs that you could possibly get. And a really unique card. I definitely think he's worth a punt as well. And then last but not least, we do have Salaba and Vlahovic, right? Salaba is a very interesting one. I featured him quite a bit before. We've got Salaba there that is going to be, yeah, a very decent player, as you see there. Defensive awareness is very high. This is what I'm talking about, the difference between having a player with defensive awareness over 90. You don't need to focus too much on acceleration. He's also got blocker interception. He's got a standard form, which is a bit of a pity. But yeah, I featured Salaba a good bit before. He's worth it if you don't have a proper center back. I still think Gavardiel is probably better. And then last but not least, we have Lahavich, who is probably Cristiano Ronaldo from 2018, the way he plays. He's got the offensive awareness, the finishing, the speed, the power, everything that you could possibly want. All the player skills that you could possibly want. He's an absolute machine. I definitely think he's worth it. He has got unwavering form as well. He's got everything that you possibly want up front as a striker, except that lack of speed, that blistering speed. But he is somebody that you could bring on, similar to kind of how I bring on Collar or bring on Morientes. Even though he doesn't have super sub, you could bring him on the second half and just cause havoc and be able to score on sight. So that is it, lads. It's a slightly longer video on getting back into the swing of things, but this was a long one. A lot of players there that were worth really talking about. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe let me know what you think my top picks for it would be if for a five star i would say just for the sheer uh uniqueness of his card i would say gavardial or nuna mendez probably depending on where you wanted to go four star is going to be timber obviously um Daku is a five star there but i would say yeah gavardial timber and uh then obviously he's ugarte they're the three that i would choose they're the three that i would probably get and i'll probably get flahavich as well because i don't have him i'll probably get nuna mendez um so i'll probably get a couple on this but yeah that is it for me lads slightly longer video don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it i'm back baby we're gonna have a load of videos today so hope you're enjoying them talk to you later